Hello and welcome to uh, this tutorial where I will explain and show you how to program the FMC with root information. I'll show you how to plan and program SIDs and STARS on the 737-800 by PMTG. To help visualize the route, I will use uh, Flight Sim Commander 9, which is an excellent route planner published by Aerosoft. Have a look at my route planning tutorial to learn more about using the route planning tool. A link is provided in the notes. I'll uh, first show you the route we will be flying. I have uh, programmed it already in the F uh, in uh, Flight Sim Commander 9. It takes us from Oslo Gardermoen down to uh, Copenhagen Kostup Airport, Denmark. And uh, to make it short and sweet, this is the written translation of our route. It takes us from Gardermoen. It will uh, leave us uh, the Arcsat 6 Bravo departure which starts with the Arcsat waypoint, or ends with the Arcsat waypoint, which is the first point of our route. It takes us to uh, a new waypoint called the Getpa. There is a direct between Arcsat and Getpa, no waypoint or uh, airway between. And then it takes us from Getpa down to Sveda, or SVD, on the Lima 996 airway. So Arcsat here takes us to Getpa, down to SVD. This is Getpa down to SVD. That is the airway Lima 996. It consists of uh, uh, several waypoints, uh, among them Kelin, Lalil, Topla, uh, and uh, this one, Comet. And we need to program this now into our FMC. So, I will head on into the cockpit here, and uh, this is uh, how your FMC will first look. I have uh, made a situation file, which I use a code dark start, where the, the APU is online, and uh, I have power and air. So... I'll just open this again and move it to another screen so I have the route in front of me. We need to go in now and start our programming. It all starts with position initiation. Uh, when I click the FMC, it will take me directly to this. If not, you can just click the init ref page or a button right here. The good thing about this FMC by Boeing is it will assume the next natural step you need to program uh, on the right hand. You always click down here on the right hand side. It will take you to the next logical step of your programming. So we start with our uh, position initiation. It takes us onto the root page, which will then take us onto the weight uh, and the cruise level and so forth page. And uh, from then on, it will take us to the engine settings during takeoff, where you can choose a full power takeoff or a derated one. Then, lastly, to the takeoff speeds uh, page. So we start at the position initiation, and um, well, I can just tell you first that the few buttons we will use during programming here now is uh, init ref. We will not actually need the root page or the RTE button because we will get there by clicking the next step in the programming of the FMC. But uh, you can get back to the next step by or next back to that step by clicking the RTE. Uh, we will use the legs button and the departure and arrival button. Those are the only buttons you need in addition to previous and next page. So, to initiate our FMC, we need to align our IRS, uh, or Initial Reference uh, uh, System, or Inertial Reference System, I mean. And we do that by going way back on the overhead panel. We have two buttons here on the PMDG 737, which controls the IRS. They're currently in off mode. We want them on the nav mode. 
so two clicks to the right will turn them to nav. You do not want them in the align mode. Uh, that's used for non-standard uh, uh, non uh, operations. Uh, the usual operation is to put it into nav mode and it will automatically go into align. The align buttons illuminate. We will align it and when the plane is properly aligned or the irises are properly aligned, the lights will extinguish and uh, normal nav mode is in operation. So we go back down to our FMC and you see we now have a nice little box we need to enter the IRS position. You can use uh, charts with the uh, GPS position uh, written on each gate and enter the position listed in the chart here for your gate. For the sake of the uh, ease, I will just use our last position, get it into our scratch pad, click the button over here, decide our last position, then copy that information into our scratch pad and now I'll copy it into our RS position. Left click here and you're aligned. And as far as I know, uh, normal alignment time is uh, variable between uh, uh, 8 9 minutes to uh, over 15. I've set mine to just a few seconds, so you're already aligned. This is what you will be looking for. This is a properly aligned um, primary flight display. We go on to our route. We are finished here with our position initiation and we go on to our route. We need to tell it where we want to go from and where we're headed to. We're currently now on Gardermoen Airport in Norway. I list or click it into our origin and we're going to Copenhagen Castle in Denmark. Enter that into our destination. And I'm just assuming we have a northerly uh, or winds favoring a northerly departure. And international flights go a departure from Gardermoen on runway 01 right. So I enter that into our runway information. As you can see, we have two pages to this route uh, setup, and I'll click next page, and this is where the magic happens. The left side says VIA, and the right hand side says two. The VIA page on the left, or the VIA side, it uh, is where you enter your airways, and the right hand side is where you enter waypoint intersections is where you get on and off your airways or directly from one waypoint to another. You could uh, manually enter all your waypoints here but that would be a waste of time. The positive thing by, or the, the reason you want to enter airways is that your database and your FMC knows uh, what waypoints are in each and every airway. So by listing the airway you save a lot of time because it will automatically enter all the waypoints in that airway that you want to fly into your legs page. Just go back and check the legs page. As you see it's empty. We haven't uh, entered anything yet. So our first waypoint is Oxat. This happens to be the last waypoint of a standard instrument departure and it's the first waypoint of uh, our route so I enter this we will use an Oxat 6 Bravo departure from runway 01 right I know this because I've checked the charts and the next waypoint is Getpaw we're not going on to uh, an airway just yet we need to go to this one first Getpaw that's the start of an airway. Jetpa lies on the airway Lima Niner Niner 6. And I take that on the left hand side. If Jetpa wasn't on Lima Niner Niner 6, I would get error message telling me that those two are incompatible. 
we won't find Getpa on this airway, but actually we do and we don't get an error message. So I've told it at Getpa I want to continue on the airway Lima 996, which will take us uh, southbound over the west coast of Sweden. Now I needed to tell it where I want to get off. I can't fly Lima 996 indefinitely. It will take me far, far, far down into Europe. So I want to stop uh, at Sveda. That's where I'm getting off. So I take that in there. Now I w I'm told that I want to, from Getpa, I want to fly southbound on this in uh, airway, Lima 996, until we get to SVD. Then I'm getting off. And SVD, by chance, is also the first waypoint of our star for runway 22 left for the Sveda 3 November arrival. I can now activate and execute. That's a fail-safe system. Uh, it leaves me... Uh, well, it uh, makes it possible for me to regret or go back uh, changes. I've, uh, I don't want to execute. So always uh, act, uh, accept, activate, and then execute. Now it tells us it wants us to go to the performance initiation page. And since we're done with uh, programming our main route segment, we haven't programmed our uh, instrument departure route, nor have we programmed our arrival route, we'll get to that. But this is our main part of our route, and what we will be filing to the ATC. So we go to performance initiation. I have already programmed the fuel or uh, entered the fuel amount into our tanks and the weights I want will be fairly light with uh, 12,000 pounds of fuel and uh, approximately 68% uh, capacity on uh, passengers and, and cargo. So what I do here is I first click the zero fuel weight. I get a number, enter it again, and our uh, ground weight is uh, entered automatically. I need to tell it how much fuel I want in reserve before it goes beep beep beep. Uh, and uh, I'm entering 5,000 pounds. That's approximately uh, 2.3 tons. Taking, taking a cost index of 66, just a number. And uh, I'm uh, going for flight level 3, 1, zero for now. This can be adjusted. Uh, during flight you can always go higher, but uh, I'm going for 310 for now, probably ending up on 330. The transition altitude is okay. That's our actual transition altitude at got moment today. And execute. That's important to execute each step you do. When you're done, execute and then next down here. We're going to the N1 limit, telling the aircraft how we want to depart, full power or a derated takeoff. We're going to do the full power thrust uh, with 26,000 uh, kilos of uh, thrust on the engines. So this is okay, just going straight on to takeoff. I need to tell it how my flap settings will be use 15 degrees of flaps. Next part is to check your center of gravity. Many times you will, many people will forget this, but this is pretty important. Uh, you get your center of gravity and your trim settings, which will be short of four, which is down here and it looks okay. We have, uh, uh, this is our trim setting now, just around uh, four and a half. And I need to confirm our V speeds. Our V2 speed will be 144. Entering uh, 144 plus 5 uh, into our MCP, or main control panel. 
and just setting the RTO brakes. And uh, now we need to go to our departure and arrival page. That's the last step for me. Uh, well, actually, we now we went a bit far because we did the takeoff speeds uh, confirmation before we did the sits and the, or the set, and it will delete our uh, takeoff speed. So we need to go back and confirm that afterwards. But as I told you, we need to get the Oxat 6 Bravo departure for runway 01 right. Execute this. Go back to the index and choose our arrival. I'm going to uh, assume the wind's favor and uh, ILS approach for runway 22 left. And uh, I know we need the Sveda 3 November arrival. I'm not going to use the transition today. Uh, this is relevant, so execute. Now, just going back and double check our V-speeds. Okay, they aren't deleted. I thought they would be, but uh, there you go, they're still there. Now let's have a little look at our legs page. We look for discontinuities, and uh, if we have them, we need to uh, see if we need to delete them. Oftentimes you will see that um, after the runway for arrival you will get a discontinuity and then a new waypoint at which you will hold. Uh, those uh, discontinuities are not meant to be deleted. Uh, you keep those. But discontinuities between your sit and your root and between your root and your star uh, those are to be deleted. We don't have any, so it looks good, as you can see. Uh, this is now the waypoints of our standard instrument departure, which will take us directly to Oxat without any discontinuities. That's a full, nice, uh, clean and tight route. And remember, we program Oxat, then get path, and then we took Lima 9 and 9 or 6. And as you can see, uh, those waypoints here, Korid, Kelin, Lalil, Topla, those are automatically entered into a legs page by entering just the airway Lima 9 and 9 or 6. And we're getting off at SVD because we're gonna land at Copenhagen. And these are the waypoints of our arrival route, standard terminal arrival route. Which will take us directly onto the ILS fix, which is uh, here at Lamox. There you have it. This is how you program your FMC. And uh, I hope you have a nice flight and that uh, this was informative enough for you to replicate in your own uh, cockpit. Wish you the best of luck, and uh, don't hesitate to write a comment with a uh, comment with questions or uh, suggestions. Bye bye.